Hello everyone, good afternoon. Welcome back again to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having a wonderful evening. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to my returning subscriber. Thank you for tuning in. Um, again, today I'm coming to you with another part two of medical terminologies. So um, a lot of students um, having difficulties with medical terminologies like LPNs, RNs, some home health aides, and some CNAs are having difficulty in um, basic uh, medical terminology. So let's say this um, tutorial is a um, medical terminology 101 for beginners. So again, if you like these types of content and these types of material, please consider um, subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like and share and uh, turn your bell notification on. Also drop your comments below. Let me know what you would like me to provide you with. So the next, the first term we have here is ROM. So ROM stands for range of motion. And we know this is a very common terminology that is used in the, um, in, in long-term care facilities and nursing homes and hospital where um, they would indicate on your plan of care range of motion, R-O-M or P-R-O-M. So R-O-M stands for range of motion. So that's when you're doing exercises for a patient. So the second term we have here is um, P-R-O-M. So what does P-R-O-M stands for? P-R-O-M stands for passive range of motion. So passive range of motion is when a patient is not able to fully do the exercises by themselves and they require a healthcare uh, provider like a nurse, a CNA, or a home health aide to help them to um do the exercises so that's what passive range of motion stands for and this is very common used in the um in facilities passive range of motion let's look at the other one so this one here has to do with um ppe so we know ppe stands for personal protective equipment so personal protective equipment, what does that include? Your personal protective equipment includes your, um, your gloves, your gun, your mask, your gurgles, all those things that will protect you from um, contracting any type of infectious diseases. So we know as healthcare providers, we have to always apply our PPE on. Let's look at the other one. So this one is PCA, patient controlled anesthesia. So a lot of times when patients are in the um on the unit they might have a PCA pump or a patient control anesthesia whereby they have controlled of how much medication they taking so that's what PCA stands for patient control anesthesia patient can control the amount of medications they can administer to themselves the other one we have here is OR. So we know this is another common one that is used. OR stands for operating room. That's where they're going to have their surgery done um, in the operating room. So that's a, another common terminology that is used in, in the medical field. Now, PHI stands for protected health information. So PHI, anything to do with patient health information, anything, 
you're not supposed to expose patient information. You, If you work in a doctor's office or a clinic, anything that has to do with patient's identity, you have to place it down. You cannot have it fade. You have to protect your patient's information. That's what PHI stands for, patient health information. It's important to protect your patient's information. The other one we have here is PNS. So PNS stands for peripheral nervous system. We know there's a central nervous system and that's the CNS. And then we have the PNS, which is the peripheral nervous systems. And that has to do with the nerve endings and the branches. SNF, skilled nursing facility. That's another common terminology that is used out there, SNF, skilled nursing facility, where they perform skilled nursing care. Another frequent uh, one that is used in medicine here is RR, respiratory rate. So sometimes you might see this abbreviation, you want to know what does that mean? So as a home health aide and CNA, it's important that you know it stands for respiratory rate. PC is another one that is used, which means after meals. That's a common one that is used. Another common um, abbreviation that is normally used is LPN, which stands for Licensed Practical Nurse. Let's see. We have another one here. So LTC, that's another common one that is used in the um, in, in medical facilities. It stands for long-term care facility. That's like your nursing home where patients go and they live there for more than 24. They live there 24-7. It's a long-term care facility where they receive their medications, their food, their physical therapy, all the different services long-term care facility this is another one that is commonly seen o z o z stands for unks so a lot of times they would ask you they would have that abbreviation you have to know it stands for unks so we know one unks is equal to 30 mls and many times you have to do the patient intake and output so you have to know if they drink uh, eight unks of um orange juice or apple juice, you have to know how to calculate that in ounces. So you'll have to multiply 30 is equal to one ounce, 30 times eight. And that will give you 240 cc's. ML is another common abbreviation that is used out there and that stands for milliliters. A thousand milliliter, 2000 milliliter, one liter is equal to a thousand milliliter. LB stands for pounds. Sometimes when you're weighing your patients, you have to know it's measuring pounds. Then you have another one here, meds. That's their medication, whatever medications they're taking. ISOL stands for isolation. Patient might be on isolation for um, maybe MRSA, maybe C. diff, whatever infectious disease they have, they might be on isolation. So guys, it's very, very important that you know what each one of these terminologies stands for because you would come across them in the medical field and you know, nobody's not gonna tell you, so they will expect you as a nurse or a home health aide or a CNA, they would expect you to come in there with not, with that knowledge. And I find a lot of students, um, they're not too much familiar with these um, different types of um, medical terminology. So again, um, it's important that you learn these medical terminology. It's important that you know them, you master them. 
and um, try to memorize them. You know, a lot of schools are not offering courses in medical terminology, so that is why a lot of students are having difficulty. So again, thank you so much for watching at this short video. Thank you for tuning in. And please, if you like these types of material and these types of content, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please turn on your bell notification. Please like these videos and share them and drop your comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the other one. Bye for now.